comment. And Johnny, are you here for that? Well, I was going to listen to something else, but uh, as long as I'm here, I mentioned a concern I had about my driveway. Okay. I repaired it. The town couldn't do anything for me at the time, but uh, the town's responsible for the drainage. It's about 30 acres that are dry from that. Stayed in, inspected, and told me what I should do. And I put in a culvert to take care of the problem. And I was looking forward to some, uh, you know, remonstrance from the town to take some responsibility. I spoke to uh, Ray about it, and I spoke to uh, uh, Road Commissioner. So it's, I just bring it up as I'm here. Right. I'll, uh, when did you speak to Martin on that, Johnny? It was last year. He came and looked and said he couldn't do anything. You know, now we have a problem with it. Probably the driveway to carry the water past my property instead of coming down into my property. And so, what are you looking for? Or what would you like from the town? I would have a consideration for the expense I went to to take care of the situation. And anything or nothing, whatever. All right, we'll get together with Ray and Martin. We'll take a look at it. And if we think there's yeah. something there we can do for you, we will. Is that all right? Yeah. What do you think? Here we go with that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, any other uh, general public comments? Step on, anything? Uh, I just wanted to update you guys. Uh, Excuse me. Week before last, I went to um, uh, ACO training for animal control officers at VLCT and Cass has put on. Uh, it sounds like there is a route to take to get set up for, for writing uh, municipal signs. Um, I want to ask further I want to hear guys' you know, approval to talk to Pat at those battle about that and figure out what, what steps we would need to take to, to make the changes necessary to start being able to, to write municipal fines and, and update the ordinance a little bit. It's been several years anyways. Now, I would be in favor of that so that the, the, the fines that we have have a little teeth in them. Uh, right now, they don't. Um, people can basically they do ignore them. But uh, so why don't you go ahead and look into that if everyone's agreeable on that? This is some head shaking or not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just I wanted to, to touch base with you guys before I reached out to, to passive and and then, you know they in that meeting they were discussing, you know, fines typically in the state start at one hundred dollars, then go to two and then three hundred dollars. It's like their their going rate, if you will, and um, there would be some setting up with the uh, state for our our contact person, which they say typically is a town clerk, as far as getting the ticket books and, and getting everything going. Sure. Well, why don't you go ahead and look into that, and when you think you <coughs> come back, um, let us know. We'll put it on the agenda so it's on the agenda item rather than just, uh, just coming in so that way it's worn properly. Um, but very good. Thanks. Any, any up, other updates or Things. Um, things are going good as far as the fire department goes. We got the uh, the packs in, and we've got a chance to use them some. And they're, uh, Let's do that. No. <laughs> well, well, use them in training. Okay. Use them in training. So we're familiar with them. Good. Hopefully, never. But and they work working well, and everything it, yes, is as, they, as promised. As promised, absolutely. Everything's worked really well with them, and, and they seem like they'll you know, last for 15 years. So. Good. Everything seems good with them, and as far as the road department, everything's good there. We're going to be doing some work um, tomorrow and Wednesday on the commons. So it'll be closed for okay, part so of the day. Uh, okay. So now, are you work so everyone knows? Stefan heard his um, MCM. Was that what you said? Yes. Uh, last week, and you're able to work. Yes. So they didn't give me restrictions. They just said, <coughs> "Don't exhaust yourself." So I. I'm still able to do my job as a general state, and then I'm just more careful doing it. Okay. Well, be certainly be careful, and if any sign of um, exhaustion or you feeling like it's uh, hurt or anything like that, uh, take take off. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah I'm, I'm just planning by day, and you know, taking it easy. I have an appointment to start physical therapy, but it's, it's a few weeks out because however busy everything is, so we're just okay. Well, taking it easy and you know if it's something that hurts me martin told me just let him know and you know we'll find something different or 
Yeah, your health is most important, but we appreciate you taking the, the work in if you can. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, I just have a quick question. I haven't, I haven't looked, but did you, were you able to get the sign from Dick? Uh, I'm hoping he'll time? be delivering it tomorrow night and we'll be able to get it up at the fire station tomorrow. Yeah, so we now we'll know where the fire station is. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. The fire station will not be lost anymore. Right, exactly. <laughs> it will be found. Good. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, is Mr. Uh, Centerset here? No, present. All right, sir, would you like to maybe move into the center or near somewhere or roll in if you want, or how would you like to do it? We're pretty flexible here just so we can all see you. All right. Uh, <laughs> I hear you. So, um, Mr. Sentence here, you had a question regarding the Moortown Mountain Road and 100B. Um, I did notice last week or at some point in the last couple of weeks there was a front porch form. Um, uh, discussion about this, so I uh, do share. Thank you. Um, it's well, a, welcome to town. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you very much. It's, a, it's center fit. Center fit? Yeah. Center fit. It's a 10 letters of confusion every time, so I've gotten quite used to Sierra Echo in November, Tango Echo, or you know, Fox Scott Indigo Tango Tango. <laughs> Uh, was never in the military. We're going to blame this on Sasha because yeah, we're still wrong. Yeah, I'll take the blame on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, I'm new to town and also new to uh, being in a, a room like this and a slide board. And I blame my daughter for all of it. She's uh, uh, 11 months old and will be one year old in August. And so in so many aspects of my life, I find myself you know, more conscientious and responsible and careful than I ever have been before. And so when I come to an intersection now, I've got a whole new perspective thinking, you know, I'm making a turn with that one in the car now. Uh, so that's what brought it up. So I just thought I'd, I'd humbly start asking about it. And I put in a call to a, a road uh, highway department in Moortown, a number I found, and was it, um, May have been somebody in the room that I spoke to. Probably about. Martin uh, Cameron. He's our road foreman. Yeah, and uh, they suggested that the you know stature of the road was one that would have to go through the select board, and um, I thought uh, so. I called and got an appointment here for the agenda. And I thought it would also be a good idea to use the front porch forum. So I sure. got um, I got uh, twelve or fifteen replies to that. Um, most all of them saying that they thought it would be a very good idea. One of them was said that they would prefer for more time to stay the way it is. Um, but on the on the whole, the vast majority of uh, citizens' responses agreed that they liked the idea a lot for whatever that's worth. You know, it's what pretty you? unofficial. I, I didn't read front porch for him, so. I oh. Sorry. Sorry. Well, the, the, I, I didn't read it last week, so please update me what was posted and how. Um, Absolutely. Well, the, the, um, the whole purpose for my, uh, my visit, the suggestion for uh, our inquiry, was about putting a mirror at the intersection where Moortown Road comes down just past the gas station. Um, it's a, a pretty um, a perilous stop sign to begin with, but the, the trouble I felt with it is that I can't see very far at all to the left. I can. Even though the, the road's actually angled a little bit towards the south, the nature of the hill um, and the way the road curves, I think that I can see you know, between 50 and 100 feet over there. And I think that if anybody were coming through town at um, better than the stop, the, better than the speed limit, that, that they might not have time to react in a safe way to somebody that was making a careful turn. And, and whether you're making a left or a right there, you got to spend a, a little bit of careful time maneuvering your vehicle since you are coming down from that hill. So, the, the suggestion or inquiry I wanted to bring to mind was whether a mirror on the opposite side of the road could be put into place, one of those uh, convex mirrors, so that you could look across and say, "Oh yeah, I'm, it's it's definitely clear all the way to the gas station," and feel that much more confident when you're making your turn. So I, I put out on the front porch forum. The, the thought, whether anybody thought that that was a good idea and whether there were any you know, history or other concerns about it. And uh, that was where the responses came from. It was a bunch of emails to me. Some of them said they'd be happy to share their names. Some of them said they'd, at least one person said they'd be happy to join me here. 
Um, but I certainly wasn't thinking about it as anything official along the lines of a petition or anything. A couple of responses mentioned um, from maybe a former select board member that because it's a state road, it might need to go through the uh, v trans. Yeah. I, I, I left a, a voicemail with them to see if they might call me back. And I don't know if that's the case. And if, if that were the case, another response suggested that maybe they would wait for um, grim statistics to accrue better than they have. Which is great that there's not no history there. There isn't. Yeah, there's been, since I've been on this board, I think it's probably around seven or eight years, and it's come up every couple of years mm -hmm. that something that's come up. And so it's been looked into pretty extensively. And there was, a, so the state did do a traffic study there, it was done a couple of traffic studies. And it, there, has, there hasn't been any accidents really there. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were looking at putting a light in, doing different things, and the state has really taken a kind of an eye and said, look, at, we're not seeing any problems here. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be a big pine tree there on the left. I don't know if you remember the big pine that was there. If you would post that. I, no, we'll yeah. give you uh, I last year's. Cool yeah, <laughs> we'll give you last year's town report. It talks about the big pine there. In fact, we'll give you a picture of it there. So you learn about the big pine. In fact, John can probably tell you. John comes down that road yeah. uh, often. In fact, after our last select board meeting, he shared a conversation with you. Why don't you go ahead and John talk about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, there was, was a very large pine tree there. People all thought that it was because of the pine tree mm -hmm. that it was bad. Yeah. But it's actually worse now. Yeah. Because people don't, before they had to inch out a little bit, to see past the pine tree, yeah. but now you don't have to because the pine's no longer there. But all of a sudden, most cars that come from the south are right there. Yeah. I mean, you look to the right because it's so difficult, first of all, to turn to look to the right. Yeah. And I mean, you have to take a look at the left again and the right again and the left again. Oh, yeah. it's, it's really, really tough to pull out there. Unfortunately, um, we've tried everything there. In, in, and when we uh, paved the, the hill, we tried to get the state to, um, uh, to change the whole intersection. Yeah. They wouldn't do that. Um, they did some upgrade in here. They, I mean, we hired an engineer. Yeah. Uh, Tatro, as I recall. Right. Around 2018. Yeah. Uh, we did change the grade somewhat, fix the drainage, and added some better guardrail. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, that, we did just about everything. But was. other than straightening, um, it, it involved moving power poles, and it was just more than the state was going to do, and that's why they, when they did that traffic stuff. Um, oh, and, and, you know, look back in the records. And then the other, the other thing is the mirror. That, because it is in the state right of way, they won't allow that either. So we've tried, we've tried everything. They, they won't allow the, um, Moon Alara Mirror on a, a, in the state the right away. It would be one thing if it were just town road, but yeah. because it's state highway, they don't allow it. Oh, that's interesting. I have no idea about these things, so it was definitely a, a humble inquiry. I just wanted to see if I could get myself into a little bit of the town conversation and the safety based concerns. So there's never, a, there's never allowed to be a mirror on a state road. I don't think that's that, the, the case. I, I, the response we've got here, again, because they're looking at it as there's not a problem. Right. Um, what we can do, though, I think we have um, someone that represents us in a regional, it's um, TACME, I don't know what that acronym actually stands for, but it, it, it is uh, dealing with the roads and such, and her name is Joyce Manchester. Um, we'll reach out to her and have her at her next meeting, uh, which I think they have in quarterly, um, inquire about that. And she's she's real good. Uh, she works actually in the in the state house, so she knows how to ask the questions and get at least a solid answer for us. Yeah. And so I think um, we'll just add it to our list. <laughs> yeah, and, and and we are um, working on with Joyce and and John and I and, and the committee are looking into some traffic coming. Scenarios for the for the book from for the village from all the way up to Maine. Oh, really? like and, 
Traffic, like, uh, just, no, just, signs or speed bumps? Yeah, no, not speed bumps. Yeah, it's it's speed highway, but just some just looking at some strategies to how we can, you know, slow people down. Yeah. That's almost a bigger problem than the, that would alleviate a lot of your problem if people weren't coming so fast through town. That's right. I mean, that's, uh, you know, if people were going the speed limit or a little bit less, I don't think you would have so much of an issue, but most people are going 40 to 50 through town. And so that, window there is, is a lot shorter and you know not on wood we've been lucky uh, that we haven't had um, any kind of problems there but um, I think looking into it it certainly cannot hurt so I appreciate you taking the time to, to bring it up to us um, and if there's anything that we can uh, um, do we'll let you know or if there's anything else that you can do for us as far as sometimes these committees ask uh, for people's experiences, so uh, if that comes up, we will reach out to you. But uh, you can also follow up with us, um, you know, in a month or so to see if we've heard anything. But we'll, we'll try to keep you informed of what's going on. Well, sure. I really appreciate the, uh, the time and consideration of the help. I, I know, Johnny, you had a comment or a question. I, I didn't get to you. Did you want to add? Yeah, yeah. I would add to uh, what a friend has said. <laughs> we know that junction. How long have you been coming in? 50 years? <laughs> I've been coming down there 30 years. Yeah, I was so over 40 years. Lifetime member of the fire department and the ambulance department. And I don't know the numbers. I think if we asked at one time how many accidents have been there, Stephen could back me up on this. There has to be an accident there. That's not to say there could be one tomorrow. There could be one tomorrow. But we're used to it. There used to be a giant pine tree there. As John is saying, it was better when the pine tree was there, but we managed. When the snow banks are there, it's a nightmare as well. Mm -hmm. but, and there's issues with that junction, and as has been stated, we've looked into realigning or changing, but it's a massive job to change that junction. It's been like that forever, and it seems to be too difficult. And I don't think anyone's made a check of the air to see you know, any amount of accidents. But no, we have. Again, we looked at. I was going to say within the last two years we requested the study and I'm sure we have it and there just there's nothing that's and I don't think I've been there in 15 years I've been on the fire department I've never been there for no, never I've not been there in 30 years and then Kim did say that Bill Mallow went a little bit too far one time and he was worried and he backed up and backed into it but that was the only accident <laughs> 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 an overabundance yeah I was, I was <laughs> Remember the night in the early morning at like five in the morning, we were headed to some job and we just slid all the way over to the cloud and we yeah. That, that happens. You know? Yeah, we all know the junction. You should just be careful. I come flying down there with a red light and I have a special technique how to pull out that I'm not going to tell you because <laughs> in the same way. If you turn left, you see the carriageway, I don't even look to the right, I see the carriageway on the left is clear. I turn left on the wrong side of the road. This is with a red light. And as soon as I've turned, I can see that it's coming. But if anything was to be coming, I wouldn't be in their way. But that's when I'm in a hurry. But apart from that, I've been through that junction, who could tell, 5,000 times, 2,000, I enjoy it more. And, you know, and I appreciate your behavior. Well, it's good you're more courageous. But, you know, mirror. Who's that going to experience with a mirror at a junction? I've never seen one work well. Yeah, I've seen one of people's driveways to get right, out. Right, yeah. The only thing I think I would be cautious, uh, cautious me about having a mirror there is people would start cheating at that point and saying, "Oh, I'm not. I don't see any lights coming off the mirror. I don't see anything." So they're not stopping or slowing what like they might go for. It. I mean, but uh, let's look into it. You know, the state may have some good reasons or some good explanations why it would or would not work. Maybe. At the very least, it was uh, it's it's been interesting to bring the conversation up and meet the the room and the uh, you know governmental machinations and towns here and, and so on. So I appreciate the consideration and all it is is the umbrella that keeps the storm away. That's good. <laughs> me. Well, thanks for coming down. You're welcome to stay and. Um... Uh, what we it, is, uh, it is getting on to be bedtime, so got to get back up to that, baby. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. well welcome to Moore Town. Yeah, welcome to Moore Town. More than come bring your family to Moore Fest. Okay. September 25th. Keep an eye out for Excellent. us. Excellent. <laughs> what did you do, Sam? Yeah. Show me here. Put a sign on the door. Shh.
shirts, shoes, and whatever required. <laughs> it's uh, not a beach. <laughs> it's not a beach. I didn't realize no, it. has been like that. He's been, yeah. As long forever. as I've known. Forever. Yeah. All right. Well, they even right. let him in the Mortown store like that. So. All right. Mr. Plotko. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Roll on up if you don't mind. If you don't mind. Maybe you know, John. Yeah. So. Why don't you um, share a little bit about why you're here tonight? I'm, you, I'm here at your invitation. <laughs> All right. So we were asking you, um, because we don't uh, have any listers or we're in lack of listers at this point, we had someone that was going to be um, in, in tonight, and now he's got a conflict, so it doesn't look like that's going to work out either. I saw that email. And so we are in need of some advice and perhaps your services. I know Cheryl Lynn has reached out and shared. I've got some uh, proposals or a proposal here. But can you share with the board everyone and for public knowledge, you know, what is required and, and some of the things that, you know, you can do? Um, well, the first automized equipment, does the town have a charter? Does it have a charter? Yes. Yes. So, if Sasha, you can, if I'm wrong, you can correct me. So, you need somebody that can sign a grant list. Right. And right now, you don't have anybody. I mean, and I think because you're a town charter, you cannot just be done with a board of listers. Is that correct? So, right. I, I think you have to have, check with the BLTC about this. I think you have to have an approval from town to create the position of an assessor. So then an assessor, one person, or in this case, sort of an um, I could sign a grand list, or James could sign a grand list, or Cassandra, under my guidance, could sign a grand list, and you would be legal. Uh, right now, I mean, you have to have at least two members of the board of listers to really be able to lodge a grand list legally. So. That's what your dilemma is, and I know that I talked with Mike at length about this, and he was needed to be done. Yep. Yep. And um, so I yeah, was sort of forewarned about this coming ahead of time. From a Nimmer perspective, we're not going to let you just wander around, flounder. We're not going to let that happen. But I, your, your biggest issue is in terms of either establishing a position of an assessor or finding at least two more listers. Yeah. So I'm not sure if people are not, I don't hear anybody knocking on the door today to come and take that position. Um, and I suspect that that's been true all the way around. Uh, we've seen that. We see it in a lot of our uh, positions in town. Uh, but listers, auditors, those type of things are really um, difficult to get people to commit the time to because they're not full-time jobs. They take enough time, they don't pay enough, so it's, it's kind of... It really has got complicated. And it's just, somebody walking off the street can no longer do it. And the other part of that is, it's no longer a three-month job. With the way things are set up now, it, it's literally a yearly job. Somebody has to be logged in to the grand list or to my VTAX, at least monthly. Um, Current use withdrawals, HS122 downloads, anything, questions, conversations about things. You know, we can we can put data online to solve that problem. That you know that can be take care of people coming in, want to get information. You can take care of that tech, technically. Uh, but those other things, let's say somebody comes along, has a hundred acres, and want to build a house, we're going to give their kid five acres. Well, that's a five acre current use withdrawal. Somebody from a, an either assessor or a lister has to sign off and determine what the, what the market value of that five acres is within 30 days. So uh, I know what happened to us this spring from, yeah. I'm speaking from Nimmer's perspective now. Um, the HS122s had not been completed. I got a, a correspondence from the state because I know that all worked for me at one point in time. <laughs> and said that Moortown hadn't done any um, current use downloads and uploads for the season. So all of a sudden we were coming to the end. We thought we were going to be able to come in and just do our do this appraisal side of things and everything else was being taken care of. 
there were end up being like 17, not simple transfers, but difficult transfers uh, to deal with. They kind of got to go look at the deed kind of transfers. Right. Uh, so, which is why we had to ask for an extension. I finally at one point said, we're not going to pull this off in three days. I said, this is just a longer job, more complicated, more involved. We're not going to do it wrong. So that was where that came about in, in the spring. I, I just told us to stop. Just get ourselves a week or two to catch our breath and, and uh, get this taken care of correctly. So we were able to do that. But it kind of caught us off guard a little bit. So we would choose not procrastination to thief of all time. You know? So that we would choose not to be delayed in doing that. We'd be, rather be a little more fun with things. I'm not blaming the listeners. I'm just saying things got delayed from their part. Quite frankly, I think that some of the things that come up with listing today, they're over the heads of a lot of people. Yeah, they got jobs. And they, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and I think you hit it on the head where if it's, it's changed so much and that job is involved, you really need to be an expert on it. And it can really cost the town a lot of money. Um, by not having the appraisals done correctly or missing deadlines. Um, so I, I know we've got, there's some assessor uh, and a reappraisal agreement here, but some things that we need to, as a town, I think, decide where, which way we want to go. And when we had, and this is what Mike, if you guys remember, remember when Mike was here, I don't know whether it was March or something like that, March or April, and he, you know, he let us know what was happening and was going. And, his recommendation, if I remember correctly, was really to that it, to move on to a professional service like Nemec um, because they just can't get the bodies or have the expertise to do it. The, keep in mind that from my perspective, um, I have a really large staff now, but we are, I get one or two phone calls or emails a week to do this. I, I kid you not, a week. And um, last week I had four, four towns, you among them, that couldn't find listers. So this is something that's happening all over the state. Um, you know, we got all the boomers and then we've all worked our rear ends off for a long time and retired. And, you know, so for a lot of people that was a good part-time, help the town out sort of endeavor and and they're willing to do that, but quite frankly, I, I, I think we've driven people away because it's gotten so difficult and complicated. Really, really. And so, uh, from our perspective, the thing that's difficult for me is that dealing with the day-to-day -day correspondence and the phone calls that come in, we can't have somebody sitting here <clears throat> To deal with that, and you and you can't afford it. Uh, we have some towns; um, they're much larger, um, much bigger appraisal issues. That we'll have somebody in there four hours a week. They're paying us good money, uh, and, but they need that sort of presence. You don't. Uh, I don't. It doesn't make sense for a town the size of more town to have somebody to come in every week to deal with stuff. Some day, because some weeks there's just nothing to do. Uh, so, from my perspective, I like to have situations for town where they have somebody that can deal with the, the course, the phone call that comes in and can produce a report for somebody, a, a property record card that has to have one. You better put that information up online. Or, and, and tell us if there is a something that has to be dealt with within the next 30 days. That's where it breaks down for us because you don't want somebody here every week to do nothing and pay to do that. And then for us, it's not efficient for our time. So we would have someone monitoring that and then say, Ed, we've got something here. Yeah. They come in and take a look at you it. Know, I, I would assign a couple of people to work here. You know, Cassandra pulled through for the town. Now, she did it by herself. Pulled through for more town last spring. Took it upon herself, did everything the right way. Um, because you're on the cloud, you can do things remotely. Um, which I love in some look at some stuff this evening before I came over here. So that's that's a good scenario. 
Uh, your records are online now, so you don't really, the days of having somebody to come in and sit here and do stuff are just pretty much done, uh, which I think is really good. That's something maybe in as a group, but we, Sasha, I'm glad you're here. Maybe this is um, some of your duties. Maybe we can redirect some of that uh, to do. I mean, answering the calls. You, you work. You do some of the treasury work, so you're familiar with the systems. You know what we're wanting as a board. So um, maybe that might be a person here. Um, we can talk about that later. But think about that. So if we had network and then you as that contact person, because it's, it's nice to have someone from town when they call to answer the phone and say the listener's office or whatever it happens to be. And sometimes it's a simple something, a question that we can get right back to where they can do. Uh, but as long as they've, they've talked to someone, I think um, that, that's half the, uh, the want there. So um, everyone, go ahead. Well, you mentioned besides that um, part of it, but you also mentioned that if if we go to your company, we have to change the the process. We have to get to a town vote to have the town. I, you know, finish, put it, put it in that. Yeah, we we do have that. In fact, Mike had given us the um, uh, the statutes on that. But because it is an issue with the state, I know we do need to get voter approval, and that's something that we can do in March. But there, so we can, um, and I would have to look at it, but we can go forward with everything um, else. With everything yeah, else. Yeah. And um, I think even sign off of the grand list if it becomes at that point. Yeah, until, right, until we get a vote. Right. So uh, there is a uh, process that I think we can. Do it, and I think we can convince people in the town that's the right thing to do. Uh, you know, um, and if they don't, then the people who are saying don't do it, then let them step in. Why can't just come in? Yeah. 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 <laughs> let them come and do the job. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it'd be happy if, if three people showed up and had some uh, intelligence and expertise or just some desire, I would, I would go forward with it. But early just gotten some general. So we have an agreement now um, with, with what we've been doing. Can you just share what additional services will be offered um, through this agreement here? Uh, the agreement's fine what? for what we're doing now. Okay. I mean, the only difference would be, uh, I've always felt that if we got to an assessor position, that there's got to be a little higher fee for that. I mean, there's just more responsibility. Yeah. And not, not that it's exorbitant by any stretch of the imagination, but right now we're set up. Well, I'm not sure what. Well, we've, we've gone to an hourly rate uh, instead of a fixed contract amount. Um, I think it serves the towns a little better right now because, you know, what we sometimes you have a town and you, and you think there's going to be a lot of work and it's that it's not. So they, the contract is still there and they get upset because you didn't put in it. 40 hours that you have to do to do that. So we've gone to this hourly rate. I will, will tell you, um, I would like to push the uh, memory to do everything on a per parcel basis, on a cost, on a different level for an assessor than there is for an appraiser. Uh, I, I think that they're, they're different. But, um, and the requirements are different in terms of experience and and certifications and things along those lines as well. So uh, we haven't done that yet. Um, so right now we're still to this hourly rate. So where you're kind of using us as you need us yep. and paying us based upon that. So that's what the agreement currently is. Now, but it does make the assumption that there will be listeners to sign the grand list in the spring. Right, and that's if we need, I mean, we can, for the intended purposes, we need to get some of the, we have one right now, Mike, and we need two, so uh, we can get, if we had to drag someone in and make them become a lister to sign off. We well, for, you know, something that, that's right now should be doing is the, the sales verification process on my taxes. There's nobody that's doing that now. Right. For you guys. 
in the state by the end of this month was going to be saying, Moortown, where are your... So now this is where this person would reach out to you and say, so that's what I'm doing tonight. So you go ahead and get this verification, whatever needs yeah. to be done. So they're, you know, they, they, it's, it's part of the equalization process. If they're going to do their study to be published in January. But they like to have all the sales verified as of last April 1st, like those sales verified and cleared up uh, by the end of July. So, you know, I would need to have, and I will, have, well, I probably ask Cassandra or somebody to jump in at some point in time and start going through that process. I'm, because I don't think we have anybody who's doing it. Please do that. Yeah. yeah, I think we're at the point where we're we're gonna we're gonna have to have your you know, have your services, you know, and change our thing so that you can sign off, you know, the access. Right. I mean, we'll go through that in March, but yeah, between now and that, between now and then, we don't have to do everything. Doing it. Mm -hmm. Like we said, we don't want you. We don't want to leave you hanging. We don't want you. You know, to things need to be smooth. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, if you can take the town on as another client, then I think we'd be happy. I mean, what are you, right. what are you well, doing? We are, no, you're just expanding. Yeah, so we're saying we're getting all these, these well, requests, and, yeah. you know, now we're going to be a... a so we'll team. have, the, for the time being, um, we'll have Sasha, the, the, the uh, touch point person here. I know you did a lot with Sherilyn, but I don't want to keep adding on to Sherilyn's responsibilities. Um, but we'll, and I'll talk to them both to see what makes sense. Is that all right with you, Sasha? Um, but yeah, even this, you know, I have no idea what's do or what's not. Sherilyn probably does. We'll find the, the easiest, best working solution here in the office. Uh, but we'll have you guys going forward um, just so we're not missing deadlines or um, doing appraisals in. Uh, Did Sasha you know, get this? She must have gotten my VTAX logins. We talked about logins when I got in here tonight. She must have, she must already have those. She probably has. Uh, I'll, I'll check with her. I'll see her this week. So. All right. Um, did you want to talk about the um, reappraisal? Re uh, yeah, I just think it's nice. I could give you a full evening discussion about numbers, if you like, no. since I'm a statistician. Um, but I just wanted you to. to Sort of highlight some things that are happening not only to you but it's across the state. So I just finished seven reappraisals this year and did ten last year. So we got a pretty and we're all in the states. So I've got a pretty handle what the market's doing. I'm also the assessor in the town of Melton. So we're doing a reappraisal there as well. So we have seven more coming up. So between like almost 30, 30 towns, we're, we're seeing what the market's doing, and it's somewhat scary. Um, so, you know, I, I think that, quite frankly, select boards sometimes get hung up on the CLA to come up with appraisal. Mm -hmm. what, I'm, what I'm going to break your heart tonight is to tell you it's not very accurate. And it's not that it's intended to be inaccurate, it's the fact that it's the way that it's done over a three year period. So, this 2018, we cover sales back from 2015, up to 2018. So, the one for 2020, the, 20, the publication for 2020 was back sales back from 17. So that doesn't really reflect where you're at now, which is why I did the, the chart in the lower portion of the page. To really understand what sales are doing, you have to look at them by year at, without them being blended over a three year period. So uh, my favorite is to look at the aggregate because the aggregate's a sort of a weighted average, if you will. And if you, in 2018, your aggregate was 95%. So you were 5% below market value for 2018. And then you went down to 92 in 2019. And then, you know, these are sales from 20, April 1st, 2020 to April 1st, 2021. And now you're down to 79% of market value. So in those three years, you increased market value by 16%. So I don't... And, so anything after April 1st of this year is not included in that number. We're just going to really... Right. So it, it's, it's worse than you think. So if, I can say welcome to your own board with everybody else. I mean, you're really a seated everywhere. I'm looking at 15% a year in, in Milton, uh, increasing it back. So your time is coming up. You know, I, I did the last year appraisal here in 2012. And 
I, I gotta say it's worked pretty well for me all those years. Um, you've gone, I mean, because you're, the real key is that your COD has not, up until this, actually got a break last year. We were 14, and then you're 18, and you're 16, so the average right now is 17%. So when it gets at 20 or above, the state has a big stick they keep in a closet. And you get it out and come into the town of Milton, in your town, and say, Thou shalt do a reappraisal. <laughs> so you're not there yet, but you're, you're knocking on the door. Um, <clears throat> And it's that COD number, and that's what they use, and that needs to be 20, or once it gets to 20. Once it gets to be 20, what it means is that on average, you're 20% off either side of your assessment, up or down. So it's a 40% swing. It's pretty, pretty lenient, to tell you the truth. But it also means that you've lost equity in your grant list. So if your common level is below 85% or above 115, that's one requirement. And if your COD is above 20, that's the other requirement. Um, so you're not there yet. Your your common levels, you, you have one year. I think you've got a year before. Yes. As we look at stuff next year, I think we'll, we'll be having a conversation about that. You'll be under orders from the state. Do so you think in 23 you have to appraise? Um, I, I think you you could potentially you go into orders, but definitely by 23 unless the market just changes dramatically. Uh, I think it could. It might even happen for you next year. Don't they usually happen every 10 years, kind of? No, no it, it just... They don't. Okay. It really just depends. It depends on this. Yeah. Some of it, does it also depend on what the list, if they keep those values up when they're appraising the homes, or is that make any Well, it's that they can't chase sales. So somebody can get a place in for 200000 and sell for two fifty. you can't put it to $250,000. It's just against the law. Um, the state will throw out your grand list because they're going to say you're chasing sales. So you can't just kick it up. What they want is they want that common level. Your common level number is, again, it's, it's pretty, pretty lenient, I think. But it, it drops off a year of sales each year. So now your 17 sales are gone and your 18 sales are up. And you can see what they're at 95%. So this year you're going to be okay. But next year, the 18th are going to drop off. And you're left with the 19s and 20s and 21s. So I think you got to do What type of um, expenses are going to be for us? What type of expense is that going to be for us? Um, I, I, I did a proposal for you just to see what it would cost if I was to, to do one today. I don't know if you got it or not. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see the number on that. Where is that? That was 95000 so, I, you know, I'm trying to do things about $100 a parcel now. What I will tell you is that I already have three and probably, probably four contracts for 2024. I'm that far out. I'm booked up for 2023, full I can't take any more chance on it to do any appraisals. So we're after 2024. I have one proposal I got a month to solve over 2025. So if I heard you correctly, so if, if our common level of appraisal is, is off by 20%, we just can't go through and change uh, 20%? You cannot. We cannot just do yeah, that. Yeah. I, I'll tell you the world according to that, all right? I think every town should update every property value every year. Because now you're going to be in the same situation as I just ran into in three towns on the south. This is huge. I'm running to, we'll make the papers in Morton and in Milton coming up. Huge fluctuations in terms of increases in, and changes in value. Because it, 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 Milton has been since 2006 since they did their last reappraisal. They're going to go up 30%, 25 and 30%. And they think that the old values mean something. And so it, it's, it's not that it's wrong, it's, it, it's hard to explain to people. And they, I always hear it all the time. You, on my value went up 30%, I didn't do anything to my house. Well, I, my new response is, well, the price of gold in 2006 was $600, and now $1,800 an ounce. Gold hasn't changed a bit. The still has gone up, right? So, it, it, the long, I, think these, I think towns have waited too long. I think I got, had to do an uh, interview with a reporter for, for men in the industry to be appraised. Same, same topics. 
What about the significant increases in value? I, I just think we wait too long. The perfect scenario, in my opinion, where we get a reappraisal done and see what the market's doing, and then the five years is sort of the cutoff before the state will allow what you're talking about. Uh, if you've had a recent appraisal in the last three to five years, they will allow towns to do an update. And I helped several towns this spring do them because they had just finished reappraisals in the last two years and the market was going out of, out of, out of hand and they were at lakefront properties and they were going skyrocketing. So we did an update. I have to do a data quality study to convince the state covers their rear end with this, that the data is okay. And if the data is okay, you can come back along and do an update. Uh, then I come along, I do, do a sales review, do all new schedules, all new land schedules, depreciation, new cost tables, the whole nine yards. But they wouldn't let you go if you'd gone beyond five years to do that. They just wouldn't do it. Mm. Wouldn't, they wouldn't prove it. So I, I, I'm here just playing the seed that is something you have to start thinking about. Absolutely. You've done, you've done well. You've, you've done well since this since 2012. You've done well. We got to at least be thinking about it so that we can get it on your schedule or something. It's a, it's, and I will tell you that there are fewer companies that are doing re, re out work now. Um, there's a couple of couple of free out of state ones that like to get in the state a little more, but they, they just quite this is again world according to Ed. They haven't done very well here, to tell you the truth. Uh, there's maybe two or three other small, com smaller companies that have been doing some stuff. Uh, one of them would never work up here, they're way down south. Um, there's two of us in the area, that's kind of like all there is. Uh, I, again, I, when, I, when I first merged my company with Nimmer, just after we got done in Moortown, I'd also finished reappraisal of St. Albans City. I worked my company in with, with Nemer, and I had I brought with me two of my staff, and now I have 18 people who work for me. So that's how much demand there's been for us to <coughs> work. And like I said, I'm out to 2024, and I already have three or four towns. It, it, it's back to our original conversation. It's really gotten technical. It's very complicated. Um, the state's making changes in how they handle their software. Um, we're going to be updating all of our software as well. Um, we hired two new programmers and we're starting to go through each module now. So that's the thing that we're doing. So, uh, it is, it, it is, it is. It is not great. And this big surge in the last year from the sales is not helped. You know, it, it has been, although we haven't seen the impact yet. Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'd, go right. for the, exactly. I'd go for the school board in, in Milton because they were worried about the increases in value. And what I told them, I think it's true, but this really started in 2019. When interest rates were, got really low, if you, if you look at the median sell prices from towns by year, you, you will actually find some that there were more sales in 2019, but the or median sale prices were actually a little bit less. Because the sales, the interest rates got lower, and people could get into the market that couldn't get in there in the past. So they started buying properties when the interest rates got down, you know, four and three and two plus percent. Um, now, post-COVID, it's a different group. Now the people that have money are coming in and paying cash for places and bidding, bidding up houses. So that, that's a different group. This thing really started in 2019. It's really going to start happening. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, any other questions sure. for Mr. Clodfuck? We got to do some things we got to um, do, but uh, at least going forward here, you know that you'll be a lot busier here in town with, uh, with the day to day work, if you will. And, and you know, Sasha will tell you to hold me. If you've got something comes up, just you know, let, let us know. Yeah. And we'll, uh, and we'll get a process so that we're not missing anything. That's the most important for us. To make okay. sure there's some kind of a check. I don't want to make sure that either Sasha or Cheryl Lynn knows where to check, what to check, when to check. You know, um, 
So maybe we'll uh, try to figure out those procedures, but um, can help there, get some help from you on that, um, just so we're not missing anything. And then we can move forward. Okay, very good. Thank you, sir. We well, appreciate your time. It. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. your help, too. So do we need to have a climate assessment service? No, no, that's what we're, we're already doing. Oh, we're already there. Okay. Right. The, um, the only thing that's new really is a reappraisal agreement. The other thing is that was printed out, so we all had a, an idea of what the contract is now. So we're just going to ignore that. So, Sasha, are you comfortable with taking on some of these added duties or extra duties? certainly help. Michael Brown said he's very willing to do some of that medical stuff. Okay. So why don't we uh, get him, why don't we try to set up a meeting between like, me, you, him, and Sherilyn. Okay. Um, and then, or anyone else would like to join us, we can certainly do that as well. Um, some morning or evening or whatever. And so we can get that down, but that would be perfect if you can do that. Okay. And as well, do you guys all agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, as soon as yeah. I'll have Sasha send it out and probably just be, make sure there's just two of us so we don't have to it so oh, the right. whole right. town is right. But we can too, I don't really care. No, 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 people are interested in where we go. But that was good stuff from Ed tonight, I think, too. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Very uh, informative. And as soon as we. I don't know whether we put a uh, RFP out for uh, appraisal services. We should probably get that out as soon as possible. Um, so can we work on that? If you and Cheryl Lynn, she'll know oh, what needs to be there for the appraisal. Because um, we had that bid from him, but because it's over 5,000, we need at least to go out for yeah. a bid. Uh, I certainly, you know, Hope that his firm comes in. He seems like they really know what we're doing, but we'll uh, we'll do that. It doesn't sound like there's very even any other. No, I don't, I don't think there's any firms there. out there. You know, like he said, the one that's in Southern Vermont. You know, yeah, they might be one. They might be one other uh, uh, game in town. Um, yeah, but they have even some financing in there. But we'll need to look at that. And, uh, Figure out some of you how we put that into the budget. Whether we need yeah, yeah. the line item stuff, or whether it's a uh, uh, oh, right. Well, huh. I think we've been putting money in every year. Yeah, I was, you know, was yeah. before coming down here, I was yeah. gonna look. I didn't look in the appraisal fund, but <laughs> let me just take a look real quick see what we got there. It would almost seem like it would have to be in the budget, though. Really, when you do. If something like that, an article like that happened to get voted down, you'd I mean, be up the creek without a paddle, basically. So we got 77000 in that fund now. Yeah. So after yeah. this year, yeah. Uh, so it's it's right right 95, so, or that bid, so we're close. So we can put that into a, we can do something with that, so we're, that feels better. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. All right. So now yeah. we need to, yeah. any other questions before we move on? No, anyway. but uh, I think you did an excellent job, Bridget. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. Talk in the language that I can understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ed, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You just see. throw numbers out there. Yeah, no, I, he's yeah, like, I actually uh, learned something. He seems to be a real straight shooter. Um, knows his business and has been very fair with the talent. Uh, we've gone to him with some short notice things and. You know, sometimes companies would take advantage of you to get the bill, and uh, they never do that. They're very, uh, very good about the way they treat it. So, uh, moving on, we have the next thing on the agenda is the ampersand appeal to the state of Vermont. Does so anyone have that in front of them? They need to have seen some emails. I don't know. Um, yeah. All right, so let me just refresh your memories or thoughts. Uh, back in 2020, um, and if you were on the board of, uh, which we all sat on the board of Bateman, I guess, if you remember, uh, Amperstand came in and they were um, appealing their, their assessed value for 2020, it's on hydro dams. 
Um, we don't know uh, a lot about how they're um, assessed, and I don't think the state does really either. But uh, regardless, they were appealing their their uh, assessed value um, for last year and this year as well. It is now in court, so by being in, in court, it allows us as select board actually to get involved and actually make a decision here tonight. Um, otherwise, uh, by statute, if it was just held up uh, in Craig's area or in delinquent tax, um, we would not, as a select board, have a uh, statutory rate to it, but because it is, um, we do. Um, so, Ron Shems has been working on this or working with King and King as well. Uh, they are the attorney for uh, Anderson. And his, um, what they want to do is they want to settle um, for 390000 That would be the fair market value. Uh, and that is something that um, their assessors came up with. And I believe that the state uh, has been working on that amount as well. It just has not been um, really gone through the, the course. So Ron suggests that we accept um, their offer and um, I'll go ahead and uh, read the whole letter so we all know what's going on here. My client in Amersham Moortown Hydro LLC has time to appeal to the assessed value of its Moortown property uh, for the years 2020 and 2021. Uh, the 2020 appeal is pending before a state appraiser yet to be named. The 2021 appeal has been considered and decided by the Moortown solicitors who determined that the fair market value of the property on April 1st was $390,000. Uh, further to my uh, telephone conversation with Ron, my client offers to settle the 2020 appeal by paying the tax at the 2020 tax rate on the fair market value of $390,000 together with interest through the date that payment is received in the attorney's fees of $100 as per Laura Korski's statement in full and complete satisfaction of the 2020 appeal and its 2020 tax obligations to the town. Um, that was their, their offer. Um, Ron, um, Cheryl, and I talked to her about it earlier, just wanted to get confirmation from her. She as well thinks um, that we should sell um, and it's um, she feels it's the fair market value. So, um, so that's for the both years. For both years. So, uh, the listers came up with three hundred ninety thousand for twenty twenty one. In twenty twenty, it was around a million dollars, if I recall. So it's not here. But it wasn't right around a million. Um, <coughs> and it was not looked at properly. You know, there was a lot of questions on whose responsibility and whether it should have been appealed and how it should have been appealed. And that's why it's appealed to the courts now. Um, but I think our listeners agree that that's what the property's value is. Really, it's true value is 390000 rather than the million. Um, and it didn't just change from 2020 to 2021. They felt there was um, reasons earlier than that that it had changed. So. Um, and then we're going to use the uh, the tax rate, which was a little bit more on 2020. So uh, we'll get that money um, in any of the interest in the fees. So I don't think there's any reason why not to, because I think the state appraiser will probably come back, and uh, and I think that's where these guys, our town guys, got there 390 thousand. But as I said, it hasn't made it through the state's process yet. So. Um, is there a, John, is there a, a motion? Yeah, I'll uh, make a motion to uh, accept the 390000 as uh, fair market value for 2020 so that we can settle um, that, uh, uh, the, appeal, the appeal from 2020. I second it. Ray seconds. <clears throat> Uh, any further questions? So, then hopefully they will be paying taxes on time for yes. 2021. Yes, yeah. that's okay. a good idea. <clears throat> um, and they will also, uh, with the 2020, includes the interest uh, as well in any of the attorney's fees. 
which is only a hundred dollars at this point. Um, so all in favor of a ride? Aye. 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 Thank you. So the next um, thing we had up on the agenda was the lister position that Bill McGill was coming in to look at, and he now has a conflict because um, he's uh, possibly getting a new job. So he's not here. And I'm not seeing, well, we're a little bit, uh, uh, it's 7 o'clock. Sam Rosenberg, is he supposed to be coming? Right, well, why don't we just go ahead and why don't we, um, Sasha, what do you have for us for any reports or communications? Um, well, is, uh, is he, was he thinking that he, he, that we would just select him or do, do we want, he's, he, he he he's to come in? I, I just, the way I read it, I thought it was we were just going to review it or something. But maybe that's what he is, I don't know. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be. reading the emails, that's all. Uh, Anyways, whatever. I don't, does, does anyone know Sam at all? No. I mean, I have no problem with appointing anyone that has. I actually reached, tried to reach out to him over the weekend, but I didn't, you know, just to say hello, you know, like, you know, just. Well, there's, there's nothing going on between, with that committee between now and our next meeting, so if there's miscommunication, we'll, we'll ask them in just so we all get to meet him. Um, yeah. Because he ran for the school board as well, so I thought it was pretty yeah. cool that he wants to be involved well, in the community. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. I keep yeah. on. Um, he was in Jack's house, right? Renting that? On no. 100B? No, that's somewhere else. I don't think so. I think he bought a house up on Martin Martin Martin. Right. right, I thought he was yeah. living there in Jack's house. No, that's house. Patrick and oh, Jack. Oh, that's someone else. Yeah. All right. Someone else. Doing, yeah. All right, for some reason, why didn't I think that was there? But it doesn't matter anyway, so... Um, so anyways, Sasha, back to you with reports or communications you there. All right, I've got that updated peak mechanical contract. It's in there. If you want to go ahead and sign that, they will fix the, the light that Efficiency Vermont found to be not installed correctly or not working right. And they will do the furnace cleanings twice a year. I also fix the wording per John. A suggestion for the personnel policies that are in there as well. Um, that Act 250 hearing, would you like it handled as far as like a town event like you did with the insulating, the window insulating training? Yeah, I think it's a town event. Okay. And then the memorial out front here is leaning. She only talked briefly to Mary Murphy and she doesn't think it's part of the cemetery. But she has been doing some asking around for some quotes and it definitely needs like cement underneath it. It's about $2,500. Is that the war memorial out front? Yep. Yeah. So I don't know what you guys have for thoughts on that. Um. Uh, so we, we, it's really not for this year. Is that anything that, that's what our crew can do? Like that? No, but I, I possibly Joe Gabbari could work with our crew, you know, if he, they provide the equipment to move it out of the way or whatever, or yeah, this might happen. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like that might work. Yeah, maybe can we look at that? I'll, you will, I'll ask Joe. I imagine Joe was busy. Yeah, wouldn't have to be this year, but... Um, yeah, I mean, you get at least get a quote. Quote from, yeah. And that was the memorial right here? Yep. In front of what the old town office was. And then Sherilyn left um, revenue and expenditure reports for you all, so you're up to date on that. Thank you. Thank you for that. And then Megan Catherine had... She replaced the bulb on the main floor in the town hall, and she said that there's a set of set of lights on the stage that the fixture is broken. Only on one side it kind of works, and she, I guess she's looking for some direction on that. And then she looked at the mold that I forwarded on to you guys, and she said she could treat it with bleach if you're good with that, and 
also, what would you like me to do as far as that goes? To we know about. Did it get wet? Yeah. I think it was after that torrential rain we had last week. Yeah. The week before. I don't know. Continuous, right? Yeah. I think we have this all, and then I know. Yeah. I don't know. I would treat it with the bleach right now. Yeah. Is it something that I mean that basement? It's in the basement, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That basement has been around, and I had sent the thing about the basement guy. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to have him come in and look at it, because that's specifically what he does is basements to figure out. Even if he can figure out how to Where's prevent that? that from coming in and potentially look at it to see to make it more of a viable spot for activities. Yeah, no, I think we can get incorporated in the whole overall town hall thing. With <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, that would be the idea. Sasha, if you could look at that and the, the electrical thing, I think we use Middlesex Electric. There's no sense of screwing around with that. We don't want to burn the place yeah. down. Yeah, they, I think they changed their name now. Lloyd's. Yes. Whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. They, they sold out. Also, said something was going on with the doorknob there. Oh, right. It's the front one? Yeah, that's the big one. I think Joe, again. Joe's at the job. Joe is, like. Joe is like <laughs> that's, that's a, that's I was asking about the doorknob. Either that door or Johnny Summer tomorrow. Is there, is there, door knob. Fix this kind of guy. <laughs> Except in the winter. Yeah, we have boots. Have boots. Yeah. yeah, with no socks on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bottom of his feet are like you wouldn't be able to do it. Harder than leather. It's incredible. Yeah. Oh, good for him. He's a character. For sure. He certainly is. He's a good guy. He's good. He is a good guy. He's always very polite. Yeah. yeah. Well, I you know he's a matter of valley ambulance he's on. And, Sir, no, the fire know. department, he's, yeah. a, he's a good man. Yeah, well, good dude. Anything else, Sasha? That's it. Mr. Ray? Oh, uh, I don't have anything. Uh, everything I want to talk about is in the whole business. Okay. Done? What about yourself? Anything well, no, I guess I'd be like Ray. I'd be into old business and new business. Uh, right. and, uh, no problem. Kelly? Same thing. Very good. Let's roll over that way, John. Well, I guess I'll mention it now. I could be full of business, but <laughs> I, I did get an email from um, uh, uh, escapes me just a minute. Chris, Chris um, Stevenson, and he was wondering about you know regarding the, uh, the rec committee. He was wondering about. Once again, the uh, trees under the power line that goes to the town forest. And I know that we talked about this back in October, November. And um, I haven't had a chance to go back in a minute. Sasha, do you remember? Did you find anything? No, no, I didn't get a chance to dig further, but okay. I remember it too. Okay. Um, because when I had called uh, this guy from uh, Green Mountain Power. He said that he wasn't the person to talk to. And um, and then I let Chris know, and Chris called him back, I guess, and he got a different story when he called him back. Um, and the guy's name is uh, Jared something. And um, bottom line, he said that, um, you know, that they would not accept a direction from a committee. It would have to be come from the select board. So he was gonna supposed to call, this was back last fall, he was supposed to call either you or myself, and he never did, this guy Jared. Yeah. So and and um, and with me when I did talk to him directly, he gave me a runaround that he wasn't the right person. So um, I think that we just need something, I would say something official from this board, uh, to stop spraying. You know, they, I mean they they spray uh, Roundup. But all the vegetation, just like they did on the common road under Carl's, uh, under, on Carl's property under the power lines. And um, we've talked about this in the Clean Water Committee, Advisory Committee as well, but this is not acceptable. You know, this stuff gets into the groundwater and everything else. So, and he says, no, it's, it's safe for the environment. Well, it's, 
it's not. So, um, so I, I, I would say that, you know, either you or I, 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 don't, I don't mind calling it that as long as I have the, the blessing from the select board. <clears throat> Are we going to ban it from all the power lines in North County? Or I guess so. That, that would be not, that would be nice. I think so. Why the, would we not? The main the main reason for there is because you know the kids are out there and everything else. I mean it's just not not safe, even though he says it is. So <clears throat> I mean, maybe you know. they should come to one of our meetings or something so we could. I don't know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't think he yeah. would. He probably no, he's so no, I know. I know. <laughs> Well, what, so what's everyone's thoughts? I mean, <clears throat> obviously we know what John's thinking, right? Yeah, no, my thought is I would, if we're going to ban it under some, we should try to ban it under all. Mm -hmm. And there are other products that they can use. I'm yeah, sure. exactly. Uh, more yeah. environmental than oh, definitely. Yeah. Roundup. Yeah. I, mean, and, I mean, yeah, it, it, granted, Roundup is pretty effective. Yeah, it's pretty effective. It's right? cost effective. It's not that's, 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 right. that's, right. that's the but, big part yeah. there. There's a lot of things that are effective. Roundup is cost effective. It's For great that. and it freaking kills everything. Yeah. And, right. yeah. Um, but where they can go in and spend labor and either cut it or there are other products. So, um, you know, I think Green Mountain Power does a, a good job, but they also uh, they make, they do quite well. So I think they can afford to. Just maybe spend a little bit more uh, here in Moortown under their hard lines and do it environmentally. Yeah, I, wonder yeah. other, I wonder what other towns are. Like, I would say most people don't even really know. No. To be honest with yeah. yeah. you. Or you I don't, don't or you, yeah. you know, until it's well, really, you bring it up, it. you don't think about it. And you're just like, geez, you know, you'll see with some tree line and linemen cutting stuff once in a while. but. Otherwise, they do when they're spraying a lot of that stuff, and that stuff is nasty. And, I mean, it, it does, it works well, but it's not. This is all the brush, so we're not talking trees that have grown up in the near water. No, 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 this, this is spray the straw that grow. Right, right, yeah. I mean, it's trees, but young, young no, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think the road department's using it. No, Mark so. is draining it, and. He, and you know, where there's bad knotweed, he will go and treat small areas where he needs to, if it's right. really uh, a problem area, but even then they don't like to because it is right. fairly toxic and uh, most people don't want it on their property. So. Unless people do it and they don't sell you. Yeah, no, there's a lot <laughs> we of... We had that. I, funny story, I went out to die, but I was at, uh, I think it was... I don't remember that where it was, and I saw him carrying a gallon of that, and it's some guy you would just really not think in town would, you know? So there are those people that like to complain about it, but well. I know I've been reading that Warren has been really good Warren conservation people over there. They've been really working at some eradication of knotweed. In fact, they had something last Thursday that I was going to try to attend, but it was raining, and I just went to Rain, but just try to show people how to, you know, how to do it. It's quite a process to yeah. remove it. They have a ton of it too. Yeah, no, my parents' whole lower field is nothing but not weed. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what they were doing, but it sounds like it's laborious. Yeah, but, so uh, but it's effective. Yeah, it's, anyways, um, so yeah, now in terms of all the more to have, I don't know how you can really regulate what. Other people, you know, people's property. No, no, no. It's under the lines, just under the lines. Under the lines, yeah. I mean, that's still they have a right of way, but it's still personal property. Now, this is specifically town property. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, okay. All right. So. Hmm. So for this town school property and the the yeah, it's all far as far. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. yeah. I, but yeah, that makes I guess that would make sense for you. Yeah. And and perhaps something in, rather than a phone call, perhaps a letter. Yeah. Sign letter would be, would be cool. All right, so why don't John, why don't you uh, or I'll move to um, I guess what what the agency is it that we're sending this to? Uh, well we'd be sending directly to Green Mountain Power. The Green Mountain Power, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, so I'd move that we send a letter to Green Mountain Power stating um, that as a 
town select board and we don't want them using Roundup on town uh, uh, owned property in the, in the right of ways uh, with Roundup. Yeah. I'll second that. Right seconds. Any other questions on that? Comments? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. And uh, so, Sasha, if you could, John, why don't you work with Sasha on that? Okay. Uh, yeah. mind. Uh, all right, let's go ahead into to old business. And, all right, now, pardon me, before we do that, uh, we have the minutes of um, July 19th. I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept them as I will be amending. And that would be. Um, under the, the on the final page, uh, under executive session, uh, after it says Sasha, after it says due to attorney-client communications, it would be regarding an accident on a town highway. Then, as per Title One, Section Three Thirteen A. And then also, uh, and then when, uh, when we say, when you say all in favor, mm -hmm. uh, you should add that attorney Philip Woodward is invited to uh, attend the um, uh, executive session. <clears throat> so anytime anybody's invited to stay for the executive session, we should put that down. And then I believe um, you had a question on the timing too. I believe the 811 is probably correct because we were in executive session for quite a while. Right. So, um, and then um, let's see. Uh, 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 who is the se who seconded that? The county seconded that. Okay, maybe I should go ahead. County second. Four in favor. Ah, okay. Four were in favor. Oh no, that's. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm back. I'm on the wrong one. Um, where it said Tom seconded. All were in favor. That's okay. Um, and then when we get to coming out of executive session, um, and then go down to Ray motion. Um, and there's no second there. Do you recall who seconded the motion to um, the settlement? I think Ray was the second. I think I made the motion. You made the motion. Mm -hmm. Did I read the letter? Right. Pardon me. You read the letter. I seconded it. Yeah, that's the way I was going to say I remember it. Yep. You seconded it. Okay. And then um, there are uh, all, all four of them were in favor, but I abstain. Oh. Okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Any other changes? Thank you, John. Yeah, we got it. Is there a second? Second. Galley seconds. No more changes. All in favor, but I. Aye. 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 All right, Ray, why don't you go ahead and start with your old news? Well, I just throw this up on the ATV ordinance. I hadn't really done much. I guess I was waiting, and I thought we were going to have the state trooper in tonight. But is that next week? Next week. Next week. So I hadn't really kind of waiting to see where no, we're good they, what they have to say. Unless you, I don't know. Well, I was kind of thinking this weekend because I mean, no matter what we put in, people are going to do it anyway. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's. Technically, if you want to be really technical, there's not supposed to be ATVs up there now. And there's people who are coming from outside of Jonesburg Road, driving all the way up there and going around. So, I mean, to be technical, but I mean, I wonder if we just keep it, because we were talking about class three, but I wonder if we keep it we put in for class four so that everyone who's up there on the class four is covered. And then give ourselves time and bring up the class three around town meeting where we can have a bigger discussion about it. 
And then it's coming in for your full year in the spring. That gives us time to figure out more of what we need for the three. And, you know, getting the state police in, figuring out what we need to do for signs, because I still haven't heard about signs. So, if we work on just keeping the four. Keep the class four. Yeah, right. because I think if anyone's coming up to the four, I mean, no one's complained for now. So, yeah. keep it there and... Yeah. And then bring it up, have that set up at town meeting so we can or have a broader a discussion on broader discussion with the town that makes sense you know it, it, it will bother those people like me here on town group it doesn't make any sense to trail up to class three so no. i drive i break a lot put on my outlaw uniform <laughs> <laughs> i figured i've never been stopped I actually, yeah, I can't say I've never been I've talked to game wardens on the road. And, you know, as long as, and I've always been registered and insured anyways. And, uh, you know, I've never been fine to say, but unfortunately, there are not everybody drives like me, you know? Yeah, and I think, I mean, the main people who I see, who are, that I see frequently, who are riding on the street are. You know, puttering along. Herrings come up from yeah. Berlin yeah. and they drive all the way up through and they just putter yeah. along and they're fine. 20 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. Yep. Not hurting anybody. Right, just done for a little. Right. It's the ones that have no. Uh, and then you get the, you know, the other. Consideration, right. Yeah. I mean, there's some pretty powerful machines out there now. And, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so. Uh, so the other couple items here, uh, the highway software, uh, I did talk to Martin again today, and he's expecting to hear from Turner, Mr. Turner, any time now, so, and I again offered to Martin, I said, if you want me over, you know, any day, you know, like a Wednesday, uh, I will meet with Turner, so you, you can go do your road work, whatever, but we need to get this done, so. Right. You, so we're working on that. Is there any, um, would Rodney or one of the other guys, I mean, Martin, you know, does not like right. paperwork. I mean, it's not his thing. He'd rather be out in the greater and such. Uh, when he was out, or not even when he was out, last year when we needed some things, Rodney brings up his phone. He's like, loads yeah. and all that stuff. He has the aptitude for that. Is that something maybe you know a little bit more? Would that be something you think that maybe we should ask Rodney to be looking into or working with us on? Um, give him some more responsibility? Can he seem to step up with that? Uh, and free Martin to do what Martin enjoys and what he does best? Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, Rodney doesn't uh, need more suited to sitting in the chair anyways. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so maybe why don't we but talk to Martin about it suggest to him that we get Rodney involved and um, we need to tell Rodney that but uh, yeah. go to Martin if you will I think what do you think yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, I think Stephanie's good enough yeah Stephanie's good enough with everything with all his other ones between yeah. the fire department and animal control and that he doesn't need to be, but you know, Rodney's been around, he does it'd be good for him to step up and, and get a little more mm -hmm. responsibility for him. I think he, he would enjoy it actually, or, or maybe not, but I think he should. So, all right, we'll talk about that. Uh, so, uh, so Don, maybe I could talk about the whole town garage uh, lights and condensation thing. Yeah. I can tell you what I have done uh, on my part that you sent me that information. Um, and I reached out to EF Wall, who had built the garage, okay, you know, and asked them, you know, what about a complete package? You know, can you put together something for both buildings? Uh, give us a, you know, I, I hear, here my thinking is, we put an RFP out with a bid date of mid-September and get pricing. When does the work have to be complete, I guess? 
think the end of the year. I think this, this year. year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he was worried about schedule, but he felt that they could do something in October. If they for, the, for the condensation thing and the lights. The, yeah, everything. everything yeah, those are the, the two whole, items. The whole package. Yeah. Uh, so instead of having two separate contracts. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we yeah. should, you know, I mean, we can price it with the separate contractors as well, but I believe EFO would be interested in, in pricing both buildings, all of the work. What's it, what's, what's it? I thought there was a, wasn't it something that the town, wasn't there something at the fire station? Oh, uh, no, not, not. No, not just the town. Just the town. Okay. All right. So just the town work. Yeah. So. And what I, all I, what I've done is I try to call an electrician. I haven't heard back from him. And I sent an email to our uh, contact at the uh, uh, peak. Is it peak? Yeah. 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 Just to see, and sent them the, the report from Efficiency Vermont to see if they could help on the condensation thing. So, and then the guy finally sent today, the guy from Efficiency Vermont, I had asked him, like, you know, do you have any contacts at some of the people Efficiency Vermont works for? Because he just gave us some names. Right. Like a cold call place right now. Forget it. Everybody's so busy. Yeah. So that's what we just got today. Oh, man, I like your, you know, that's a great suggestion. Get one guy. I mean, AFO is familiar with the Yeah, one yeah, it's perfect. Uh, but, uh, so I don't know if you want to put out a public RP or just start sending, send make up an RP and just send it to. Do that, right? If you have it, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I guess uh, so. Sure. We can get together. <laughs> okay, yeah. Or I can, we can even do this online. Probably a phone online. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to try, do you want to try to type up an RFP and, and, and send it to me, or I can, or either way. What I was basically going to say is, we need a. Here's a report. You can price all the work or part of the work. Uh, just make it clear what you are pricing, but we need price by yeah. this day. Maybe that's yeah. all I need to do. And I think yeah, but I think if we could look at the list that the guy sent us yes. just to see because. If we, if, like you know some, some of the subs, like EF Wall obviously, and maybe and Peak we know because it is going to be hard to find anyway. So yeah. if we can find some subs, or not subs, some, some yeah. contractors who we work for, we have more of a chance that it will gear up to do it by the fall or you know. So, what a, I guess so let's what look a, at that list tomorrow or whatever. We can so, try to put something together. Yeah, I'll perfect. I'll office tomorrow. Um, and send it over to you. If we like it, we can send it to Sasha and she can put the yeah. whole package together. Great. Right. Off it goes. Off okay. it goes and yeah. get a price back by in mid September. That'd be Perfect. pretty good. Nice, that'd be good. Thank and you then we get some money from Efficiency Vermont too, as well. Yeah. So that's all I got in the whole business. Very good. Uh, Don, what do you have there? Um, well, I called back the gentleman at Green Mountain Power about the Tapman School, and he and just said, "Hey, keep us posted. You know, we're interested in." He, they, he's um, they're a little bogged down right now because they're having to do a uh, on that project and another project, sort of a whole uh, something. I think he said water flow assessment in the land and the water and the dam. And so he, he said. Well, he'll get back to us. Right. Um, I went to, I did stop at the state garage because, you know, still about 100 B. Yeah. You know, I've managed to find a, um, uh, the assistant foreman and just told him that by the More Town Village sign and up by the curbs after Stephanie Venom's house that, you know, the road was, you know, it's not even a year old. So they said they'd look at it, you know. Yeah. You were going to try. So we're also trying to talk to people in V-Trans, but they said to come in, so I did that. Um, I wanted to just try to see if we can set up some time that we can meet at the sand pit and, you know, look at the trees. And you had that other, those other trees or bushes that you were talking about at the last yeah. meeting. So, okay. yeah. I don't know, we can call each other during the week, maybe we can, okay. we can go swimming there at the same time if we get a good day. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then just uh, the owl's nest, just to remind people about if they want to take a look at the owl's nest down there and, you know, or talk to JB, because he'll, you know, you could probably just talk to JB. I just talk to him. I've spoken to him. Oh, great. I'm comfortable with it. If people are 
And Sasha was going to look into yeah. something yeah. as well. So I was just wondering how we were doing with that. Did you? She What's that? I'm sorry, I didn't, I spaced on that one. Oh, okay. it's fine. You know, that's right. Okay. Just, um, and that's all I do. I just have a, that, I'm good. Oh, and we're going to meet a, have a town, I'll send this to Sasha in an email, but we're going to do a town, have another town, our town hall committee. We're going to meet on 8 11 at 5 30, but I'll send that email to Sasha. Where are you guys so, meeting at? At the town hall. At the town hall? Yeah. We're still waiting from the, for the report from uh, Bill Gallup, but uh, it should be, hopefully, we'll, with any luck, we'll have it before this meeting, which would be helpful. But we figured we need to meet just so we can keep, yeah, some, keep, the keep some momentum because we'd like to have at least something for more fest, you know, that we could yeah. show people or talk to people. Talk about a little yeah. about it, my ideas of what's going on. Yeah, so that's it for me. Kelly, down there. What do you got? No, that was it. Just say to stuff. That was it. Ready, John? No, no, no. Business. I mean, I could bring the the mask thing up under new business. Right? I mean, I'm I'm wearing a mask mainly because of the new CDC guidelines and the fact that I have a grandson. And you know, we got to think about the school kids too going back to school. This is this is ridiculous. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. find out that you know anybody who's vaccinated. Can pass it on to children. I mean, it's just, it's horrifying. So, to me, it's mask back on. Uh, we are originally were going to have an in person, the town, Waitsville Town Hall, in person Ridge to River meeting on Thursday. Um, and we, we got, they got, even got the, the owl to, to do both a Zoom alternative. Uh, instead, we're going to do it all Zoom once again. So. Mm. What was that meeting? What were you saying? Yeah, I was saying. No, well, oh, no the, the, the ridge, ridge to river. Ridge to river. Oh. Ridge to river. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. With your mask. Yeah. Again. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, I, yeah. And, you know, like, you know, Essex County, I mean, that's, that's that and Chittenden are the two worst counties right now. You know, because of the, the, they have the biggest increase in cases. And you know what's happening. People from down south are coming up here because it's safe. Right. And, and what it, applications what for college is, 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 is vaccination. Is the, yeah, I know. I know. And we're, we're now, it's this, is it next week that yes. we're having the. I think it was fourth. Or is it There's Wednesday? Yeah. Here uh, in the villa at the school, there's a vaccination clinic going on, right? Yes. Um, Oh, great. Well, the, uh, what is it, the Waterbury Ambulance, they, a couple, a week or so ago, just checked to see if we minded, and I said, no, it would be fine if they had something on the parking lot. So, uh, you know, encourage everyone. Um, but to what John's time on here is the headline in Vermont Digger. Substantial COVID spread places in and that's a county on the new CDC guidelines. And today's cases were 42 cases. Friday was 55, so, yeah. you know, been of the Delta, the Delta, yeah. I know, it's, yeah. it's, no, it's mind-boggling as well. I have two colleagues that uh, have been vaccinated, and they were idiots, so they went to Florida, both of them, different, and they both came back with uh, um, COVID. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't changed our guidelines at work yet, so we're still, Yeah. I mean, we can, we're in our office and we can go out wherever, but we're also, everyone that we go see is basically vaccinated and everyone in the office is, so. Yeah, well, at this point, I mean, at this time, there's no, um, as far as the state guidance, as far as doing anything, um, who knows yeah. what that will, yeah. What will yeah, who knows what's coming. A fortunate situation that you know again, uh, as people aren't getting vaccinated, it just mutates, and yeah, exactly. That's the problem, yeah, you know, right? Every other virus, yeah. that's what they so, do. So, yeah, so it, John, are you suggesting that not so much tonight, but that we need to start thinking about as a board how we're going to be as a town? We have to wait for the state directive, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'd wait to see if 
the state right. has any changes. That's, that's my opinion. What do they, there's been a recommendation for a mass in the schools, is that correct or no? I mean, or is that CDC? Yeah, yeah. That's the CDC. That's just yeah. the CDC, yeah. Of course, CDC is for any indoor, anything indoors, is what their recommendation is. Yeah, people are aware so of the, the way I understand it is, if, if you have been vaccinated, you may still get COVID, COVID, or, COVID or the strand, I'm move but further away. you're probably not going to die. Yeah, your, your chances of right. dying or, or, or being hospitalized are extremely slim, but you can pass it on to children, and they're still working on the vaccine for you know going down under right. 12. So, I mean, it's... And, and that's my biggest concern. Yeah. Has there been an outbreak in children? Yeah. Yeah. Of uh, uh, children dying or just? I dying? haven't heard the numbers on, on dying. Well, I'm sure kids are. Uh, yeah. Kids are sick. I mean, they're getting sick, but I don't think it's. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I guess I don't want to talk on the subject too much, but, and um, and uh, I, I just think that at some point uh, we. We need to recognize that COVID is always going to be here. There's always going to be people with it. Just like several of the other diseases that we have, the cancer, et cetera, et cetera. That, you know, we just maybe we don't spread cancer to each other, but it's still there. It's, it's one of the things we have to deal with in our life. But, you know, the, 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 yeah. the, the, it's, it's like the flu every year. Yeah, it's except mm -hmm. it's killing a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, it's well, it's, the flu actually, if you look into it, it, it kills a lot of people. It does not 600,000, not 600,000, no, not 600,000. But, uh, but now, if you have the vaccine, the likelihood of uh, dying or being hospitalized is, is very low. Right. Um, so you know, people aren't getting the vaccines, they're the ones that are in big trouble. We don't want anyone to, to die or we don't want to wish that on anyone. But to your point, Ray, it's going to be here and do you want to go around the rest of your life with a mask on? I don't know. Yeah. And I, and personally, I don't want to throw it is taken on my grandkids. This whole COVID, uh, they're all healthy. You know, thank God for that. But it's take the mental stress on everybody is, is overwhelming yeah. to these kids. Yeah. yeah, I think it really is. I mean, my daughters who were a little older, you know, you know, and we had that conversation and she was home this past week and it really it's been really tough in there. She's like, I just don't want to go back to that again. You know, that people are really, it's tough, you know, and that people, would, everyone would do their job and get vaccinated. Yeah. You know. And pretty much Vermonters have been doing it. Yeah, 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 that's good. Great in Vermont. Yeah. You know, the safest state in the nation, but. Yeah. But all the uh, applications are way up and for uh, UVM and, and uh, so on. So, because everyone wants to come to Vermont where it's safe. <laughs> are they requiring vaccinations? Because I know some schools are. Yes. Yeah, they yeah. 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 And there are people fighting that. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, sure. Well, they require you to go get your meningitis shot before you go to any college. Whether you want to or not, you have to go do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I so it's the same. Yeah. Same thing. So we'll we'll see how that, but it yeah. is a concern. I think everyone around this table. Yeah. Sure. Um, and and we'll take appropriate steps as needed. But at this point, you know, I would uh, let's see what kind of guidance we have from the state. Anything else there, John? Uh, no. Anyone else that's a new business? Oh. I just want to mention a new business that, uh, anyway, I think we talked about this a little bit last week, uh, about getting a compactor or something for their road crew. So I'm, I told them the day to start looking into pricing again. Okay. So we manufacture something like, uh, I believe that's where you manufacture something for I think you said five thousand dollars, whatever. So we need we need to come up with something. I think it paid for itself, and just uh, the 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 way that the gravel products are today, they seem to 
really, uh, it seems to be oil and more products or whatever, that, but when you get a big storm, it becomes so slippery. It's, it's like worse than ice, right? <laughs> So. Stefan was actually just talking about it in here before we started about Duxbury having a roller behind the grader and how yeah. nicely some of the roads, because I guess they graded on Thursday before it rained. Yeah. And he said one of the roads there looked great. Yeah. He mm -hmm. wouldn't have even known. I think it really should be done. Yeah. It just, uh, I think it would pay for itself in many ways. So, anyways, I told Mark to get some price and then hopefully we can get it in our budget next year. Very good. All right, Tom, would you? I just had a, a question or something maybe we can think about or maybe you already have the answer. But do we have anything for like cyber security kind of thing? I mean, I know as a small town, maybe we don't need to, but I've been, I was having a conversation with someone, you know, all these computer ransomware things. It's even has happened to municipalities, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just, I didn't know if we have, in our computer system, if we have some kind of security or, I, I don't know. We do. We do. Butternut Systems is our IT people. And they have a security system. Yep. Perfect. But, you know, it just occurred to me, I just thought. I, I think it's a good question. You know, question. You know yeah. Especially as we get more and more things are online that we're doing. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of information that you know some of these people probably use. I don't so know. Then they brought you. Know, I don't know. The whole thing is crazy. What's going on? Ransom. Sasha, could you do us a favor and, and maybe from Butternut give us? And I'm sure they've probably given it to us before. But it's about, I'm sure there's a document here somewhere. Just what we have for security, so that we know. You know. Uh, I, mean, I don't know what question to ask. I don't, I don't, either. I don't either. You know, but we have cyber security yet. Things. So, what does that mean? You know, that that we have a good password? Or, so, it's yeah, nice to know. <laughs> yeah. When we get an email from the town and we reply to it, if we have a randomware or something on our own computer, now we send it back to the town. You know, is it going to yeah. be like you get. I don't know. Yeah, yeah so no. Or well, vice versa, we get shit from the town, probably stuff from the town. <laughs> and all of a sudden affected my yeah. computer. Well, yeah, I don't we know. just had it at work where we got an email that actually looked, like it looked legit. Even the email address looked legit because sometimes you can look at them and say, oh, it's supposed to be .org and it's .com. Yeah. But even that looked fine and probably a hundred people at least opened it and we all had to go in and change our passwords. Wow. So now every email we get, we're like, wait, Same did you get this email? Is this... Yeah, so if, uh, yeah. let's see, and, and if there are any education or anything that we should, or things that we should be aware of, just so that, I mean, I think yeah. we're all doing business now, so you, you know the things to look for, but, you know, maybe, maybe there's other things. Anything else done? No, that was all. That was just... Kelly, Kelly, what do you got? Any other, nothing new? John? No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just have a few things to sign. And then we can have to add I inadvertently actually, this was on my desk and I happened to. Oh, wow. That's my grandson. Nice. Inadvertently. Come on. No, no, no. I just noticed it was here. Let's get it for the camera, please. Very <laughs> Zoom in. Congratulations, John. What's the name here, John? That's Anders. Anders. Anders Philip Tell. Oh, or Anders, I'm sorry, Anders Peter. It's Tell. a great picture. Yeah, is that Anders awesome? Tell. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Looks, like, Looks a little like Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah, that's very right. nice. Although I'm Opa. 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> so, I suppose those things in here that we need to sign. I just put them in there. I didn't know what you were. Warm zoning regulations. Oh, the guy wrote a letter and I saw something on the paper.
paper the other day. Oh, maybe it was my dad. Oh, I don't know. He wrote a letter. Of an opinion. Yeah. In the Valley of Florida. Oh. It may have been. Oh, I didn't, I didn't really pay it. I'm going to go back and look tonight and see who wrote it. <laughs> so what did you say about her dad? <laughs> I didn't say anything about her <laughs> No, because I guess they're making it so if you have like a camper, you can't have your camper like in front of your house. It has to be behind your house. Your garage doors have to be behind oh, your house. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was reading some of that. There was some real things. There was some yeah. pretty crazy oh, things. Oh, yeah. Too. Why would you do that? Yeah, no, yeah, right. It's aesthetics. It's all aesthetics. Dorset has the same thing. If you ever drive through Dorset, you'll notice if you're on the main strip in Dorset, you have to have white house paint with black shutters. So when you drive mm -hmm. through Dorset, all the houses are yeah. white with black shutters because it's in their town. That's nice. Alright, so I just signed the uh, preventive maintenance agreement. There's only one that was on the, uh, that was for Peak, which we talked about. Um, and we have uh, this is just a, uh, I guess sign the assessor's agreement here, but that's the one we've had. I guess it's just continuing on the dates um, we've got to June 2022 20, as far as the um, services and the cost, so that's, that's kind of a good point. Oh, the lawnmower is back, too. And, yeah, uh, and then the personnel policy, and the which was changed uh, for John's. I mean, the insurance were just updated. Junkyard on Route 2. When does it, doesn't that ever come up for? Uh, yeah, that, yeah. I don't know if it's every year or not. Um, I remember we, we signed it. It has no, been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. I was thinking of the same thing. Um, so maybe, maybe Sasha, maybe we should look into that. Yeah, let's look into that. I think when I first got on the board, it was that's when I remember it was it was the sale. It changed hands, right? Changed hands, yeah. 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 But I don't remember. That's all I remember was. You know, the ice horse. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's one. That's actually a regulated business that should be probably cleaner than what it is. Just the other day with that 
Oh, Before the rain on Friday, we had the big wind, I think, on Thursday. It was really windy, wasn't it, or something? Yeah. Like that. Saturday, that we had to yeah. sends his kid back in to go, they must have made a mistake or something, you know? The guy goes, no, that's what it is. You don't like it, don't come back. You know, we don't really care, that's what it is. Take your eight ounce right. cappuccino, you know? get out of here. Like, seriously? The guy doesn't even care. You know, okay, if you don't like it, that's what it is, don't come back. Because yeah. there's, you know, a line out the door. Generally, mm -hmm. that's, that's how people have gotten. 
we were having a little family party this weekend and trying to get a quarter bottle. Quarter bottle? No way. None available. Every place in Vermont is like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Everybody's having a party. Everybody's party. Uh, the place right across, was at Wind River, right across from the Formula Ford, had a bunch of them out there. Right? I know. Wind, just throw one on the back. <laughs> Dirty job. They wouldn't too. miss one. No. Oh, so these are port potties. Thank you, Ray. Um, the uh, the more the more is working with the recreation community. The recreation community is bringing in uh, two port potties for the more fest. Where should they go? P and P. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> where should they go? What did we say? P and P something. To get I thought you said where to pee. <laughs> where should we go? Like, yeah, it's okay, right? We got that. Where did the where did the go? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I don't know. So somewhere out by the I don't know, the pavilion or where do you where is Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. I'd have near the entrance or Yeah. Alright, so or put one in one place and one. Yeah. One over they should be one experts one. in that. They come in and assess the position, you know, things and put them where they think. Yeah, I mean, maybe just right out of here. Probably. Yeah, I mean, yeah, where they can. Because we all walk right, right in through this right. gate, gate right, right here, right? Yep. Yeah, right by the gate. Well, maybe across and by the pavilion. Near yeah, the gate, okay. All right. All right, Mary, thank you for your expertise on that. that. Was, yeah. <laughs> so we don't have to make a motion. Yes, right? yeah. We yeah. don't need a motion on that. No, 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 no. We were just, <laughs> to make sure. yeah, they're getting two. They're getting uh, one to accommodate uh, wheelchairs and uh, right. it's not too bad. So good. All right. So, and also, I got the um, fireworks contract sent to them. Okay. I got Stephen to sign the works permits with all that stuff. So. Perfect. So one other thing, uh, Sasha, if you could look into them, we can probably do make it fairly expensive because um, the store is donating um, for the pig roast. Mm -hmm. Could you have a sign made, you know, just a vinyl, and say thank you, Mortown General Store, for sponsoring the pig roast, so that we can hang up that day there. Um, and then at some point, I'll talk to Sherilyn, but we just need to send them. An invoice up at Jolly for five hundred dollars, yeah. yeah, and have it um, attention Sean Bartlett. Okay. So, thank you very much for the uh, I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a safe night. Thank you, Mark.